I used to think that everybody had it all figured out and I was just missing some vital puzzle piece that everybody had and I didn't. I had no motivation, I didn't know how to study. I wasn't able to focus on anything all the way through and see it through. I didn't know how everybody seemed to figure things out and just get loads of things done. I was burning out over and over again and I needed to change my story for good. So after years of struggling, I decided it was time to change the story and I found that puzzle piece and it really started with one specific thing, which I'll tell you about in a minute. But as I carried on and I kept on leaning into that, I uncovered all these parts of myself. I uncovered these life hacks, these principles, these truths that enable me to live an easier existence and get things done without burning out. And so I created a business from my imagination, manifested it into reality, and now I'm coaching and guiding and helping people better themselves and overcome this and that and, and break through and break free and become their greatest selves, which is very rewarding. I also created pretty much a whole book in a weekend. I tuned into my creativity and was able to write lots of songs from my band without stressing over it and just tuning into my innate creativity that we all have. I also made a course, a hundred video course with a 400 page workbook, which, you know, took nearly two years to create, but I had the focus to stay disciplined, to see it through to the end. And now people are doing that course, enjoying that course, and it's a full circle moment. I now have a full diary of clients and I'm able to travel with my wife to Cape Town and Thailand and go for lunch with friends and swim in the warm sea. Actually, not in Cape Town, it was freezing, but in Thailand it was very, very warm. And this was a bucket list dream. This was a dream come true, and this is what we've decided to do with our lives, and helping some others that I'm teaching to do the same. I've been able to work from the beach, helping people and getting paid. It just doesn't get any better than that for me. This might not be your dream, but it was my dream. And I'm not sharing all this just to go, wow, <laughs> all the stuff I've done. I'm saying this because I was couch surfing for years. I was working jobs that I hated. And this was after the anxiety, depression, alcoholism. I was working in jobs that were going nowhere. I was not tapping into my full potential and I wasn't happy. I wasn't satisfied and I couldn't see how the story was gonna change. So in this video, I wanna share some simple tools, techniques, and tips that I applied and diligently and religiously almost stuck to because I was so sick of where my life was going and how it was just not going anywhere. And I just thought I was made for more than this. I knew I was made for more than this. And so I, I went all the way in. I cut off friends. I left those jobs and I went all in and it worked, <laughs> it worked. And now I have to just maintain that and enjoy that and love that and be that. So let's go. Number one, I'm in Australia. I've taken a year out from my old life. I need to figure out who I am, what I'm doing, what this thing is. And I'm looking for jobs on my laptop and I have this overwhelming feeling to stop and I heard a voice. This has only happened three times in my life. This was an incredibly significant one. Go to the sauna. I've told this before if you watch these videos. Such a, <laughs> such a privileged thing to hear. Go to the sauna. But this sauna overlooked Bondi Beach in Australia, in Sydney. You could see the surfers. You could sit there and, and sweat high up and look down on these waves and these surfers and it was magical. I had no reason to go to the sauna, but I heard a voice go to the sauna. I told my wife, gotta go to the sauna, don't know why, see you later. I meditated in the sauna. I'd been meditating on and off since I was about 15 years old, trying all sorts of different methods and techniques. And you know, I considered myself a meditator, but I never really knew what I was doing. I woke up, and I came around and this guy was there, happened to be one of Sydney's greatest meditation teachers. 
We got to talking, I studied with him, and he taught me a profound mantra-based meditation that completely changed my world. It's as simple as it gets. You concentrate on one thing for one period of time. And by doing this process over and over again, you quite literally rewire yourself to focus. And this is something I could never do growing up. I couldn't keep my attention in one place unless it was for something that I absolutely loved, like playing my guitar or maybe computer games or hanging out with my friends. But when it came to anything else, doo -doo 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 -doo, just everywhere. So in a nutshell, when I started to meditate every day, there's a handful of principles that you live by. Don't open your eyes. Sit quietly, sit in stillness. Focus on nothing but your breath, your body or the mantra, depending on what technique you're doing. When your mind starts to wonder, bring it back to the mantra, the breath or the body, whatever it is that you're doing. Most people try this once, twice and go, ah, oh, I just can't do it. It's bullshit. You can do it. You just haven't done it long enough or you haven't found the best teacher. <laughs> it really is this simple. When we diligently practice something over and over and over again, the repetition that, that sports people put in to become these incredible people, all these amazing athletes or rock stars or writers, whatever, they put the work in, they put the time in. And the thing with meditation is it's enjoyable. It's effortless. Yes, you might be bored at points. Yes, you might have loads of thoughts at points. Come back to the mantra, come back to the breath, come back to the body, whatever technique you're doing. So if you want a technique, if you want your own personal meditation technique that's deep and profound and that rewires you to stay calm, to stay focused, to stay on it, and you don't want all the bells and whistles and all of that stuff, all the, the beads and, and all the spiritual side of it. Maybe that's not for you, maybe it is. Either way, DM me, comment below and say meditation and we'll start your journey. It's possibly one of the, it, it's the one of, it's absolutely one of my top three things I've ever done in my life. It profoundly changed my entire world. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, awareness. I tuned into awareness. I didn't know what this was, what this meant, why this was important, but the byproduct of meditation is mindfulness. I was starting to notice things were happening in my life, obstacles, problems, issues, difficulties, things I had to overcome, and I was calm. I had this, it'll be what it'll be kind of attitude. I can tell you so many stories about a time in my life when I was looking forward to something or something didn't quite come off how I wanted to and I would feel this pause. And it's almost like the world would stop and I felt an overwhelming feeling of it was what it was, it is what it is, it will be what it will be. And this removes you from, oh God, oh, well, why didn't that happen? And why me? And oh, I just really wanted that. And oh, it's so sad or it's so difficult. All of the emotions, it removed the emotions out of my life. Not that I wasn't connected to my emotions and not processing my emotions, absolutely. That kind of came afterwards, but I wasn't reacting anymore. And I used to react <laughs> all the time. A guy pushed past me in, in the tube once and knocked my bag off just to get on his train. And this was, I believe, the first moment where I didn't react at all. I just felt nothing but compassion for this poor guy who was so unaware that he was knocking people over left, right and center to get on his train, to get to his busy work or whatever he was doing. And in the past, I would have gone, oh, dickhead. <laughs> or I definitely would have shouted something. And it was like, pause. That just happened. It was what it was. Right now it is what it is. It will be what it will be. What was it? It was a guy who was busy for work and he was unconscious and unaware and pushing past me. What is it now? Well, it's, it's nothing. Nothing happened. I'm fine. Whatever. It will be what it will be. It will just be a memory. I went to the gym once. I was really excited about it. I got a free guest pass to the gym and I packed my bag the night before and I got there and I got on the bus and I walked all the way there. It was a whole big thing, really early. And the gym didn't open till nine o'clock and it was like seven in the morning or something. And I stopped and I smiled and I just 
took the same journey back. I felt like this. <laughs> yeah, it was what it was. It is what it is. It'll be what it'll be. I'm not going to the gym this morning. But in the past, I would have texted my wife and said, oh, the gym's shut. Ah! <laughs> Woken her up. And these are tiny examples, but in pain, when major things happen, in grief, in in the big things in life, it was what it was. It is what it is, it'll be what it'll be. And I noticed I was responding and not reacting. I was noticing when I was stuck in the future thoughts, the anxieties would start to come in. Oh, that's a future thought that I'm trying to figure out. We feel anxiety when we're trying to uncover or figure out a future problem, which is impossible, which can be impossible and the breath gets short, we get overwhelmed, and then when we're in the spiral of doom, we think about all the other things that are bad. So I was noticing when I was in the past thinking and I was in the future thinking. Meditation gave me this gift of awareness. It amplified it. It made me tune into it. And I started to notice, oh, I don't have to be in that. I don't have to have that voice. Oh, I, I don't need this one either. And life became about living in the now. If you're depressed, you're living in the past. If you're anxious, you're living in the future. If you're at peace, you're in the present. And this living in the present moment is a new way of living and being. It's not something we're always taught how to do. It's not always anything here for us in the present. So this is when we learn who we really are. We learn about gratitude and we learn about appreciating everything. And some people don't like that. Some people think that's a load of hippie nonsense, but most of those people are sad and depressed and not doing what they want to be doing. I started to notice when I started hanging around with people that loved what they did, they were encouraging, they lifted me up, they appreciated me, they encouraged me to be more of that. And I started to notice the opposite was happening. I was being pulled down. I was the jokes, the snide comments from the people that weren't doing what they wanted to be doing. Awareness taught me all of this, taught me who I was, taught me who my real friends were, taught me what I should be focusing on, where I should be putting my energy. It allowed me to look at what I was thinking about. Is this good for me? Am I consuming good information here? The news. Is this objective news or is this just news that's trying to put me in a state of fear? It allowed me to think about what I was listening to, what are other people's thoughts I was consuming in songs. It allowed me to think about what I was eating, the fried stuff, the fatty stuff, the oily stuff, how I was feeling after I ate all this stuff, when I drank alcohol, how I would feel after my hangover, was this the aftermath of a hangover or was I just depressed? Was I depressed or was I just sad? There's a big difference. Sad, you can easily cure. <laughs> Depression, you gotta do a bit more work, but it's still curable. And if you wanna have that conversation, cause it's a big conversation, message me, DM me, we'll have these conversations. But awareness, Mindfulness, meditation allowed me to rewire myself to become the version of myself that I wanted to be. And I didn't even know who I wanted to be yet. Which brings us to number three. So number three, focusing on what I wanted. Be selfish for the first time in your life, my friend, and think about you. Think about you before you think about anyone else. To be the best person around your family, your friends, the world, you've got to absolutely love and adore yourself and be the best version of yourself. Because if you're not, it ripples out and it affects everybody else. So awareness taught me that, my self-talk taught me that, what I was saying about myself, what I was saying about others what I was thinking about others. And so I started to realize that my life was working out. It was unfolding. It was becoming better than it had ever been. And I still didn't know who I was, where I wanted to go, what I wanted to achieve, what I wanted to be, do have an experience in this life. So I created that. I decided to tune in to my mind and my heart and create a vision of what I wanted out of this life. And then I decided to just go for it. The beauty of this is like typing in to the GPS in your car, a destination. You don't know where it is, 
You don't know how you're gonna get there, but you know that this GPS is gonna guide you the way. And so for 20 years in total, really, I was figuring out all of these things. I was trying all sorts of things out. I was trying and failing and doing things for a couple of months, going, ah, it doesn't actually work for me, and then trying something else, doing multiple things at once, and then getting overwhelmed. I was listening to this guy, this woman, that guy, that dude, all this information, trying to find that nugget of information. And one day I realized that I had <laughs> all I could ever need in here and in here. And I started just to listen to myself. Meditation is like climbing up a mountain and stopping and going in a cave and just resting and listening to yourself and your body, energizing, repairing. I started to listen to myself, what I wanted. And I started to feel the trust within myself that I could do it. I started to believe in myself. I started to love myself. I could never say those words out loud, let alone to the internet. Loving yourself, appreciating yourself for all that you've been through, all that you've done, all that you are to be is, <laughs> it doesn't get better than that. And if you can master that, if you can work on that every single day and love yourself, say to yourself, I love you, thank you. I love you, thank you. Even if you don't, even if you've got a lot of stuff to work through, I love you, thank you. Say it with me now, let's do three. Hand on heart, smile, relax your shoulders, breathe in. I love you. Breathe in. Thank you. You're saying this to yourself, from yourself. Breathe in. I love you. Breathe in. Thank you. Breathe in. I love you. Breathe in and mean it. Thank you. If you want a roadmap, if you want guidance, if you want to know how to piece all this together, if this stuff resonates with you, if you like the sound of my calm tone, and my encouragement, my compassion, and my guidance. I can guide you all the way to where you want to be. You've got to do that work, but I can help you figure out what that vision is. I can help encourage you to just go for it. I can help you tap out from the overwhelming data overload of all of life and clearly see your vision and nudge you <laughs> to just, just take it on. And if you want to know more, click the link below, check out the Big Transformation course. It'll be one of the greatest things that you ever did for yourself. It's got all of this and so much more in there. The meditation, the healing, the mapping out, the boundaries, the sleep, everything. I don't want to reel it all off, just check the link out. One of the greatest things that you'll ever do for yourself. I'll see you in there. And if not, I'll see you on the next video. Or I'll see you in there and on the next video.